how much... So now we have Jan Chu who will tell us about part of distribution functions. Please go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you. First, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me to give this talk. My assignment is to talk about the pattern distribution functions. So what do we learn from them? So we know uh, this workshop is focused on the mass, the hydro mass or emergence of uh, mass from QCD. Then since uh, Bowen just talked about the mass decomposition uh, in the formula proposed by Shantan Ji, there are two terms in that four term formulas. Two of them relate to these uh, Platonic energies. So if you know the partner distribution precisely to all the range of the X from zero to one, if you integral over that weighted by X, you effectively get the uh, the core contribution, the gluon contribution to the energy of the, the, the bond of the protons. And of course, you can also try to calculate it on the lattice. Oops. Okay. All right, so, so in my, my talk, we try to concentrate on more about the positron distribution itself as a function of the X, the momentum fractions, how precise we can measure them and how precise, what kind of physics we can learn from the distribution itself. So I gave a simple definition of the quark distribution as an example, which is defined as a matrix sum of the two quark field correlated then with a specific uh, spin projector. In this case, related to the spin average one, you have a, you know, uh, a helicity distribution as well as a transversity distribution. Here, I just concentrate on the spin average one. The one very important thing is to emphasize that the pattern distribution function, although we talked all the time, they are not direct physical observable. So very different from the cross sections. Because uh, when, when you have a cross section, you measure the experiment, that's what you measure. Then, uh, but you never directly measure pattern distribution in any given experiment. Then uh, because that's the consequence of the fact of the color confinement, you can see the quarks grew on carry colors, they cannot be seen in isolations. The because of that, that what is the part of the, why we need them, even we cannot measure them, we cannot see them. Well, the pollen distributions are the consequence of the perturbed QCD factorization of physical observables. So that's, for example, take a simplest case, I have electrons scattered on the proton, so connected to EICC talk just a moment ago. Then in a field theory, you have the scattering electron and proton by exchange of the one photon as a one photon approximations, but you don't know what happened in this block. Then you take a square of that, give you the cross section. But once the momentum transfer so large, we learn to, we can make approximation, then the hot collision between the virtual photon and the hydronic material could be so localized and time so short compared to the what's going on inside of the proton that has typical time scale the one before me. So you can separate those type physics into a short distance hot collision, we know as the hot part actually become the probe for us to see the active proton, in this case, the quarks, for example. Then the rest of them, the amplitude you square them, in fact, approximately to the probability to find the active proton inside hadron with longitudinal momentum fractions. Of course, this is not exact. It's, a, it's approximation. Is it related to the, the so-called high twist or power correction? If physically, is it really related to the time scale between the hard collision and the time scale uh, for a long distance hydronic interaction within the protons. So that's a factorization because these, these quantity is known as the, were defined in, the, in this effect right the formalism, we define them as say in this particular case called a distribution function known as a pattern distributions. Then uh, and uh, also we know that this PDF as a defined is a very well defined in QCD as a quantum correlation functions. As you can see here, it's a very well defined in terms of matrix and the non-local operators. Then there is a one immediate consequence that because it's non-local operators, that means that this operator Need, you know, because this is not the direct physical observable, this operator renom required additional renormalizations. Because when you have fixed renormalization of QCD, you know the, how the field, local fields are renormalized in the mass, all these things, but this is not local operator is new. So you have to have, a, and it's not physical. 
direct physical quantity. So you have to have additional normalization. This additional normalization is very important to do actual normalization scale dependence to the Pollan distributions. Then, so when you connect to the experiment, then PDF the are non perturbity then uh, you cannot measure, you know, you cannot see them. How can you test them? Because they are universal. Because the universality of the PDF in the factorization formalism, they give a predictive power of uh, perturbative factorization formalism. You can measure some, them in a one pro some process and then predict them in another process. So, and also because they're universal, they are the property, property of the hadrons. Then a uh, perturbative because you cannot calculate directly, the actually the PDF is non-perturbative. Naturally, as you can calculate the lattice QCD. The answer is uh, no, you cannot calculate them directly due to the time dependence of the operators and also you create in space formulation lattice QCD calculation. So I will talk more about it. How can we take advantage of the power of lattice QCD calculating non perturbative quantities? And how can we run about the information from lattice calculation on this part on distribution functions? So what we do in the last 40 uh, or more years, then the power distribution have been extracted from the experiment data in terms of global analysis using factorization formalism. For example, you have a lepton hydron scattering, you depend on the Pollan distributions. You can see if you measure the hydro in the final state, we depend on fermentation functions. There are too many unknown. What we can calculate is short distance hot pot. Then we need a more observable, like a hydron hydron collision at the RGC. They depend on two Pollan distributions convolute together. We can calculate coefficient functions. Then also you can have E plus or minus, they have gave you information that had the fermentation function. You can have many more observables, ideas that get a you know, jet cross section, others. Then eventually do the, you calculate all the short distance coefficients to C, then with a certain uh, scheme to how the perturbative will define this pattern distribution of fermentation functions, and also get given all the, uh, the calculations. So once you have those Cs, and you have the experiment data, all those measurable, then you do the global analysis as a typical inverse problem. You can extract the pattern distribution and the fermentation functions labeled by the order of the approximation you use to calculate those Cs. So the pattern distribution you extract often have the label, say, uh, the leading order, next leading order, next, next leading order, which is a factor, the a reflection of the order of the coefficient function you calculate. And also that scheme, this MS bar, the DR asking or other scheme, it's a reflected when you calculate this coefficient function, you have to calculate the PDF uh, platonically, then you have to define the, how you renormalize these uh, distributions. So this is how we extract the last 40 years. So we learned a lot. So you have a tremendous data set. I gave one example by using uh, fixed target data as well as the LGC data. You have a huge coverage in terms of the kinematical region, in terms of the momentum fraction X and the uh, momentum transfer the scales. Then, then you do the global fit. The quality of fit is so good in, in then chi-square per degree freedom is order of one. This is very, very non-trivial because you have a many different uh, physically observed process. Then they say the factorization is approximation or the power correction for different process or the process dependence are completely different. So how can you get the universal distributions for certain kinematic region we have been probed? That's very non-trivial. Then if you look at the leading order, of course, you can see the improvement. Then the start with uh, chi-square is a little bit high. Then go to the next leading order, the chi-square per degree freedom is a little bit lower. Then go to the next, next leading order, you can see the chi-square per degree freedom is almost order one. This, but this is the example from NNPDF 3.1. Then of course, this is a, uh, then with these, then it has been shown at many places, you can compare many physical observable with the one set of Pollan distribution, plus all you can calculate within the perturbative QCD for the hot part as well as the electroweak theory. Then you can really see the consistency between theory and the experiment. So conclusion of the electroweak process plus QCD perturbation theory and the universal PDF works. They literally, it's an unprecedented success of QCD and the standard model. So in this length case, Pollen distribution is necessary. You have to extract them precisely. Then they, in the sense, it's also not only the test of QCD theory, but also is a tool or give us the confidence to eventually test anything beyond the standard model, say discover the beyond standard model signals. But there's the other side, the Pollen distribution, we like to understand the structure. So in this, process, there is not the only one 
uh, collaboration to do that, it's really the global effort. If I mention only the next next leading order accuracy, there's a CTAC effort. You can see from the, the early version to now CT18, the improvement. What really matters for hydronic collision, if you add, use the PDF as a tool to discover new thing at the EIC, it's a, really not the single part of the ship because you have two hydron involved, it's a convolution of the two distributions. So in the sense you have a group group flux, how much uncertainty is, then the, uh, you can have a cork, light cork, heavy cork, or cork ground process. You can see in the middle part of the mass range you try to probe, pollen distribution uncertainty is a tiny less than 10%. But however, when you go to high X region, then, the, then you will find that this the high mass region, and then you will find that the uncertainty is very large corresponding to large X region upon on distributions. Then, so then also then we recently learned that the impact of pollen distribution is uh, uh, also sensitive to the uh, structure of dynamics inside proton, especially C quark distribution. So with those calculations, the new fit, you can see the uh, new impact of the new data compared to early distributions. Then you can find these uh, talk uh, mid, mid prices. And also there is a uh, uh, MRHT collaboration. You will find they also improve from the, the early version to now the 2000 version. Next, next leading order, you will find a change from their early version to new version with the uh, fit. Then also the idea is that NPDF itself moved from the 3.1 version to now 4.1. You can see continuing improvement of the constraint of these, uh, uh, the valence distributions, the uh, cork, cork luminosities, then the cork gruam become involved in the C, so the uncertainty is bigger. And the grew grew again, the uncertainty is bigger, but it's a smaller than we used to have. So you can see and in this case, uh, uh, way that the pollen distribution have been very well determined from uh, all this experiment measurement, then uh, uncertainty from the theory, it give us the real confidence we can try to probe the new physics based model. So in this case, this uh, pollen distribution is necessary knowledge we have to have you know, in order to give us confidence to discover the uh, new physics. Then they, and also, you know, this connected to, I mentioned the hydron structure, they connect to the distribution of the C, then the impact of the new data on the, from the uh, sequence, you can see the change of the global fit of the pattern C quark distribution from the NMPDF. So you can see the theory and the experiment are working together, so phenomenology, they try to the best of the pattern distribution we can have. So, well, then, uh, what I want to focus for the second half of my talk, which is related to more focus of this uh, workshop, is exactly the, the special kinematic region of pollen distribution, say pollen distribution as the large X broken. We see that at the, for this uh, quark flavor, uh, uh, up, down, especially anti quark flavors, you will, you will see the uncertainty is huge. There's really, really uncertain the huge. When you go to close to the half or to the one in the large X region, then and also recently, because if you do the hydron hydron collision, it's always difficult to pin down the large X distribution because you always have a convolution. If you go to large X in the one end, another end is a small X, then it's a very difficult. So there's a, a experiment at the Jefferson Lab, a deep in scattering experiment. You have a lepton on a hydron, so that means you have a single hydron state involved. You can push the kinematics to the large X region. Of course, because pattern distribution is fall off very quickly when the X becomes larger. So the effect of platonic luminosity is getting lower and lower. So you have to have a large lumin hydron luminosity to be able to do this kind of measurement. Luckily, JLab has uh, the highest uh, luminosity in, uh, in the, any collision, in the high energy collision we have, where they can reach to 10, uh, 37, 38, 39. That's really huge numbers. Then, so you can see the new data from the, uh, the uh, couple talk uh, last week, then you will find that they can push the data of the ratio of F2N and F2P to almost to beyond the uh, 0.8. So compared to the old data, you can really have a push to larger X region. Then, uh, then and also global fit, this data have been put in the global fit by JAM collaboration. You can see the knowledge of uncertainty of the, of the ratio of the D over U in the large X region can be shrinked. 
And uh, but the question is, what do we learn? Actually, in the logex region is very, very unique. In the sense that you pull up a very small configuration from your proton wave functions, then but uh, you still have a confinement, still have all the things that have to be satisfied. So then from the pattern distribution formula, you can see if we know the wave function of the proton, then you, you, know, you can say, oh, I can calculate everything. But of course, we don't know the proton wave functions and also everything is in unperturbed regions. So that historically, you don't, don't stop people to make a model because model is important because if we make a model, means we make approximations. If we make approximation, we can understand data, we learn some things. And in this particular, case I give example if you use a simple just model like SU6 model and the other uh, uh, Dyson Schwinger uh, type approaches but the, the message here is that different approaches different models or the different way you view the proton at a larger edge then they predict the very different ratios so it is very important for experiment to measure this precisely. Eventually, a model of phenomenologists try to improve their model. We can learn something about how the dynamics taking place inside the protons. So I use the rest of my talk concentrate on say what the lattice can do. You know, we can have a, a extraction from phenomenology from experiment data. We have a model. Then know what the lattice can do. A short answer I said earlier: the lattice cannot calculate this directly. You had a, we had a talk yesterday by. We went told you a lot of uh, about it, so I will try to be brief for certain part of it. Then the, the idea you say uh, from uh, Chanton proposed to say uh, we cannot calculate these things, but we can calculate the equal time matrix element instead of correlated on the light cone field. You can correlate on this around the z. That basically the idea you say when we do the, the separation of these uh, two field on the in the z direction, when you push the hydro momentum go to infinity, then eventually getting closer and closer to the light cones. So that's a hope that hopefully you eventually can relate to this distribution to the normal PDF through certain matches. Then also there's a other then uh, other approaches, but the one thing I emphasize here, as I said earlier, if you have a DIS cross section, you can calculate the cross section. Say if you project the hadron into the platonic state, you can calculate it. QCD renormalization takes care of other, other problem. Once you regularize the collinear divergence, you can really literally calculate that. But for the because the Pollen distribution, so as the quality pollen distribution, are not direct physical observables, you have to renormalize, have to specify how you renormalize it. But different renormalization, different way to renormalize it, you actually get a different quantities, then they should reflect it in the side of the matching. So then there is different approach, including the pseudo PDF approach, they actually on the lattice calculate same matrix element. Because the lattice calculate matrix in the position space, then for the quality PDF, you do the full rate transform. Then of course the people will question because we have a limited number of range of Z on the lattice calculation. How can I get a, a reliable full rate transform? There are many other issues. Then uh, pseudo PDF, the uh, slide uh, calculate exactly same matrix element instead of a full rate transform on the P, uh, Z, they full rate transform called Yoffe time, the PZ over C. Then in that case, they, the range of the, that, uh, the momentum fraction is uh, limited. So then there's a more general approach proposed actually by myself a long time ago, then with my collaborators, uh, we call the so-called a good lattice cross-section, which is a factory QCD factorization approach. So in that case, we don't do any Fourier transform, like uh, we try this uncertainties. Idea is that we take what the lattice can calculate in the position space. That's a matrix element. We have to define the renominations and others. Then you try to factorize them into the PDF and convolute the matching coefficient. It's directly from position space to the momentum space. So I'd like to spend a little bit more time to talk about this general QCD factorization approach, what they can tell us, because you can control uncertainties. Here, your lattice calculate, lattice give you a certain uncertainty. Now you have a Fourier transform uncertainty. There are other uncertainties. But here, we try to say whatever the lattice uncertainty is, we calculate matching just like a normal factorization approach. So basic idea of the following, you calculate something on lattice, could be the field field correlator or the current current correlator. The idea you can calculate anything you can calculate on lattice, so long as they can be factorized as the PDF and the short distance hot part with the controllable approximation, just like what we do for experiment cross section. You can think this is experiment cross section, you measured it, then you can factorize the PDF and the short distance hot part. The idea, uh, then you have to do the global analysis 
to extract the PDF because they are universal from the multiple observable from the last calculations. So it is true you don't get the direct PDF information since we don't cannot get it anyway. So do this global analysis, we'll get the right information. Then the, then the question, what's the difference between this approach to the, say, I measure the ex, from the experiment? They are complementary. We just had a question about three neutrons. If I can calculate this uh, proton uh, correlator on the lattice, I can easily calculate three neutrons. And I could calculate mesons or others. They are completely complementary. So I gave her the example, say, what does the last cross section mean? In the sense, it's really the matrix sum. But you can calculate the lattice equal time matrix sum. Key is they can be calculated the lattice QCD with good continuous limit. That means they have to be well, uh, they have to be UV renormalized and infrared safe, perturbatively, and also can be factorized to universal uh, matrix of PDF or the or TMD actually. Mm -hmm. So the example is that we saw the quality and the pseudo PDF, they have- Excuse me, you have five more minutes. Okay, so I, I'm almost there, yeah. So they calculate almost the same matrix element. Then, then, the, then also you can go beyond that. You don't have to have the quark uh, field or gluon field correlators. You can have actually two current because as we see, if you do calculate this matrix and have a power divergence, then you have really have to renormalize all the exponential uh, divergent factors. Then if you use a current current correlator, you 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 don't have a you, this kind of power divergence, but of course you pay a penalty. It's hard to calculate that on the lattice because you have to calculate four point functions. So I gave you a couple of examples that how to get the physical observable means lattice observable. You start with a bell field. Then you have to define your correlator for called can be a good one. Then you have to define the renormalization, whether or not you have to prove this can be renormalized, it, multiplicated ones. But luckily there have been lots of work happened in the last few years. Then the quark field and the gluon field, they can the correlator can be multiplicated and normalized. So then you can define a matrix element of that operator. Then that's your physical observable. That's your calculate on the lattice. So then from that, you derive the factorization formula of this matrix element for the uh, quark and the gluon field. They also derived factorized for the quark is the all order factorization, the PDF in the momentum space, then the matrix element in the position space, then with the matching coefficients. So then you, once you have that, they say, well, I don't have to have a unique way to renormalize it because it's operates not physical. It's not directly a physical observable where well, you can have different renormalization, but different renormalization corresponding to give you a different observable in the sense of like, uh, uh, you can, it's not like a difference between the DIS and JOYM, but since you only have a single hydro matrix sum, but it's a different observables. You can renormalize it differently as long as they're consistent. So we have a different renormalization scheme that you heard about it. Then also the interesting thing, you can use a vacuum renormalization as well. So then I, the work had been done to your surprise, probably some of you are now working on it. We already have a two loop matching coefficient. So that means that lattice calculation can in principle match the same accuracy as experiment extraction of the PDF to the two loop. So these are exactly calculated, recently published so for the matching coefficients. So I gave you some examples that to see the impact of it. So you take the known distribution to calculate the, predict what the lattice matrix sum is, go in the reverse process, say then you can do the lattice calculation to compare. So this is trying to show the impact of the leading order and next leading order. You can see leading order have a large uncertainty of scale choices. Then, then when you go to the next leading order, the scale choice is much smaller, next, next leading are smaller. Here, I didn't normalize it. The, you know, the denomination we changed the overall normalization. But then, because this is not the physical quantities, right? You renormalize it, they different order, you get a different answers. Then when you factorize it to the PDF, they will eventually extract a different order PDF if you have a matching coefficients. So then, so then you can see, I expand the certain region, try to see the fixed Cassini range. You can see the range of the uncertainties expanded. You can see the next, next leading order get very small uncertainty. So with the lattice data, if we can calculate accurately, so lattice can actually produce the equal quality of type of the uh, PDF extract compared with the experiment. So I gave you one example is the current current correct. We don't have to do the uh, field because that field has the, 
most difficult uncertainty of that is the renormalization because you have to renormalize the non perturbatively have the exponential uh, divergence. So when you do the current current case, we say wait in the it, lattice is not the real experiment. I can choose, a, for example, vector current and extra vector current combination, two current, combine it in such a way you will end up with direct proportional balanced quark distributions. So this is like a F3 type of measurement in the DIS. So with a different choice of current, you can see the advantage, you can calculate matching coefficients. So the, here is the data. One example, prime, this is what we talk about. So we see that lattice calculation is given here. And so you know, the data, you do the global fit. In this case, valence, you don't just to extract it. Then also there's other approaches, you use the quality PDF approach, the pseudo PDF approach. They are, have a much a larger error in this case, because especially when you're close to one, the reason is simple because the renormalization is a power, you know, perturbative power divergent, we the sum the exponentially divergent. So the renormalization uncertainty in the large act is very important, very large. So then, then the political connected to what the Paul Wen just said. So PDF we study here is just small part of this 3D image of things. You have a Wigner function to the 3D image, but PDF, but they are very, very important. They're most fundamental, uh, you know, better control, have the most of the data, but EIC or EIC China, they will explore other range of phase space. So let me finish that the good single hadron matrix element, good means they calculable in lattice QCD, renormalizable and factorizable in QCD, there should be good lattice observable for extracting non perturbative PDF and GPD and others. I want to emphasize the cons conservation of the difficulties, no free lunch. Then you can have a calculate the correlator of the two field. It sounds like you're directly close to the PDF, but uh, you have a power divergence. Perturbatively, they sum to the to exponential divergence. Then, of course, the whole divergence, uh, UV divergence, non perturbative. So that introduces the large uncertainties. And also, but you say I can take the current current correlator, I can control the UV behavior. If the conserved current, I don't even need to renormalize them. But in that case, it's good, but you have to calculate four point function of the lattice if the computing power is improved. So this certainly has some advantages. So the lattice calculation, although limited by computing power now, could provide better information on the PDF, especially in the large X. I emphasize that if you do hydron hydron collision, you always have a two hydron convolution. Here is a single hydron matrix element. And also you don't convolute with another PDF, another fermentation functions, match them from the position space to the PDF in the momentum space, actually suppress some of the issues we heard yesterday about threshold algorithm, because uh, if you focus that point in the momentum space, the momentum space, there is a perturbative large logarithm, but we do the, to the match in the position space, additional integration of the logarithm, actually minimize the impact of those logarithms because logarithms can be integratable. So that is QCD can be used to, to study hydrogen structure, just like uh, there are lots of progress have been made, expanding now expansion to the TMD GPD is on the way, have a lot of work have been done. This talk is about PDF, but there are a lot of progress being made for the GPD and also to TMDs. But more work are still needed to understand the PDF from the QCD because uh, we, Lattice cannot directly give you the PDF. That's just like an experiment measurement. You try to find the best measurement they eventually try to extract the PDF from them, extract the TMD GPD from them. Then you always involve the global fitting, involve the, all the inverse problem we have to deal with. It. Then especially the large X region is very sensitive to the hydron structure. Yeah, so we need to improve our calculation, our knowledge in that region. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. So now we have time for questions. Please raise your hands. Well, maybe I can start it off. Uh, you mentioned neutron PDFs. So as far as I understood the question in the previous talk uh, was about new, uh, the change of neutron properties in a medium. So what would be the prospects for calculating PDFs in a medium on the lattice? Well, the experiment measurement, whatever you extract, is a neutron in the medium. For example, if you do the Duron, you do the helium-3, then you never have free neutrons. So you extract the PDF of that, you take away, say, deuteron, take away the proton part, you get a, a neutron part. That neutron part ha is, has nuclear effect in it. 
But on the other hand, on the lattice, once I know, you know, we already calculated the proton, we can change it to the proton, the neutron state, then we can calculate a neutron uh, structure or PDF of the neutron. Those are the free neutrons, have no nuclear effect. So the difference of the, what the lattice can calculate compared to what you can extract from the experiment measurement exactly tell us the difference, say, the st structure of the neutron inside medium versus the one outside the medium. Right. Okay, thank you.